In today's video, I'm going to show you that with wires, cubes, leftover PE parts and paint, how you can turn this into this. Hello everyone, welcome back. In the previous video, I built the BMW 003 jet engine for the Henkel 162. I continued the build by upgrading the details of the cockpit. Tamiya released this kit in 2006, so it's nice and detailed, however I found some areas needing easy improvement. So for the first step I scratched out the details of what I wanted to upgrade, for instance the elevator trims mechanism rod and handle. I used a 2mm micro chisel, hobby blade and sanding sponges. Then I glued the parts together. It looks ok, but let's pump it up a bit. The ejection seat and the back wall of the cockpit definitely need some treatment. First, I drilled the big holes on both sides of the seat on the wall. Then with a soft pencil, I pre-drew the line of the missing rivets. Next I used Rosie the Riveter to make them. Finally, I used an ordinary needle at the areas the riveter couldn't reach. Let's talk a bit about the ejection seat. It is a logical question why a complex early stage development, like an ejection seat, is installed in the Henkel 162 instead of an ordinary pilot seat. Well, the answer is very simple. Above behind the pilot's head there was a massive jet engine. In an emergency, a so-called traditional bailout would have been very dangerous. This is the reason why they had to design and install an ejection seat into the Henkel 162. The seat was mounted to the bulkhead by two channels. In between the channels behind the seat there was a cylinder spring-loaded against gas pressure. The trigger was on the right-hand side handle, over the footrest. Before the ejection, the pilot had to tighten the seat belts, place the legs on the footrests, raise the safety catch and pull the trigger. The parachute was stored in the seat cushion. An emergency oxygen bottle was installed in the seat cavity. During ejection, there was a clipped chain to the airframe which operated an oxygen cock to supply oxygen from the seat parachute pack. The seat was adjustable for the pilot's height, but only on the ground. This is one of the earliest ejection seats in service in the world. By the end of World War II, over 60 air crews had used ejection seats in combat. The first known emergency use of an ejection seat happened during a test flight of the first prototype of the Henkel 280 V1 on the 13th of January in 1942. On the tragic heavy snowy day, Henkel tested the Argus AS-014 impulse jets for the Fisler 103 missile on the Henkel 280. Two Messerschmitt BF-110C towed the Henkel. It was a cold day and at 2400 meter altitude, test pilot Helmut Schenk found he had no control over the aircraft. The control surfaces iced up and the test pilot jettisoned the tow line and ejected from the Henkel 280. Before Schenk's ejection there was a Henkel test pilot called Bush who tested the seat but Schenk was the first who ejected in an emergency. The Henkel 280 never went into production. The Henkel 219 Uhu night fighter in 1942 was the first operational aircraft to use ejection seats. Now back to the build. I painted the headrest and the back cushion semi-gloss black to imitate leather. The kit has seat belt decals, which is not too realistic, so I used leftover PE belts from my previous Eduard kit instead. For gluing the PE parts I used ordinary superglue, and I used cross-locking tweezers to keep the parts in place while the glue set. Cross-locking tweezers are handy tools, I use them all the time.
The instrument panel was so simple. It was made of plywood. The engine instrument consisted of fuel pressure gauge, an oil pressure gauge, an exhaust temperature indicator, an indicator of the thrust and the fuel content gauge. The flight instruments were the typical indicators, like airspeed, altimeter, turn indicator and so on. A KF38 magnetic compass controlled the navigation. There is also an instrument panel decal in the kit. That was nice, but I needed to use a lot of decal chemicals to apply it nicely. After the decal dried, I fixed the surface with a layer of matte coat, then dropped a clear drop in every single instrument face to make them shiny. There was some blue bottle on the top of the nose gear bay. This part is not in the kit, so I made it from a piece of sprue. I used my cheap electric drill and a homemade sanding stick. I cut a piece of masking tape patent in silver to use it to holding down the blue bottle. I pre-paint the tubes and the wires if it's possible. It is much easier for me than painting them after I glue them in place. I didn't like the rudder pedals, so I made new ones. I used alloy tubes, styrene rods and uh, leftover PE pedals from a Fokker Wolf 190 kit. It was a bit tricky to set everything to the correct angle, but finally it came up quite good. Much better than the original one. I also added the brake tubes, I used lead wires to imitate them. Now I think it looks much better. I modified the Revigan site as well. I used a transparent plastic sheet to cut new glass. I cut it in the right shape and size, then glued it in place with a tiny drop of thin glue. Finally, I glued it on the top of the dashboard. A few tiny cables run from the control stick to the bottom of the instrument panel. These wires control the bottom of the stick, such as the armament trigger. I twisted thin copper wires and glued them to a piece of 0.4 mm lead wire. The control stick might look familiar. Yes, you are correct, it's from the BF109, but a bit shorter than the original version. At the port side I added a 0.3mm alloy tube for the elevator trim mechanism and changed the crank as well. There were two red handles, one of these for the landing gear emergency release handle. That handle pulled the two thin wires to release the gears if the hydraulic ceased functioning. Another red handle is the flaps hydraulic operator. I used leftover PE parts for this upgrade again, this time from a pre-51 Mustang kit.
For this build I used a website as a reference, memorial-flight.com. I put the link in the description below so you can check it for yourself. Memory of Flight is a non-profit organization established in 1988 to preserve French and European aeronautical heritage. They completely restored a Henkel 162. There are tons of useful photos and videos on their webpage. It's always a debate about how historically accurate a museum restored aircraft is. Should we trust these references? My humble opinion is that I try to be accurate and check as many sources as possible, but I don't go too crazy. I don't count rivets and probably in the museum they try to do excellent work. Unfortunately, all of the original plans, materials and spare parts are highly restricted because some of these machines were in operation 100 years ago. Nevertheless, I'm grateful for these dedicated people to save and restore a piece of history for us. According to the reference pictures that I used, there were instruction marks on the side wall of the cockpit. I imitated these tiny writings with a fine brush. I used a drop of paint retarder in the white mix to delay the drying of the paint in the brush. Not perfect, but in this scale I couldn't have done a better job. Anyway, I made all my hard work and later hide it in the fuselage, never to be seen again. But it's cool things to make, wouldn't you agree? Let's get started the starboard side of the cockpit. This side is a bit busier than the other side. Let's see what we have here. We have an oxygen pressure regulator, the oxygen pressure and the level gauge, which I updated with leftover PE instrument, and the oxygen hose. The right panel is the FUG25 radio and the FUG16 control units. Above the radio control a signal flare opening was fitted and at the right back was the circuit breaker panel. The cable harness on the right side is spectacular, so I made it from thin copper wires. First I cut the connectors from a 0.3mm alloy tube, then glued pre-painted 0.1mm copper wires into the three connectors. I pre-painted the cables because it's pretty challenging to paint them properly after I glue them in place. Why should I make my work harder than that is necessary? After the glue dried, I twisted them into one cable harness. I also twisted multiple tiny copper wires into one harness. I twisted them by hand and because of this the harness isn't even, it's quite irregular so it looks more realistic. The connector of the headset is a piece of 0.5mm alloy tube and 0.1mm wire painted in Tamiya flat brown. I made the control wires for the rudder pedals. Again I used 0.3mm alloy tubes and 0.1mm alloy wire for this build, glued by ordinary superglue.
The final touch was the oxygen hose. Onto a 0.3 mm copper wire, I wrap around 0.2 mm copper wire. I shaped it and then glued the oxygen hose to the regulator. I applied very light weathering. As I mentioned in the BMW 003 video, these aircraft barely flew in operation. They were basically brand new. For contrast differences, I used highly diluted black. After the black dried, I used a touch of, again highly diluted, mid-brown panel liners. This mixture didn't make it dirty, it gave a little bit of contrast. I still have unfinished business in the inside of the fuselage. I have to build and upgrade the main undercarriage bay, but this new project will start in the next video. So if you enjoyed what you see in this video or in my videos, please like and click the subscribe with the little bell. And you won't miss the next episode. What's more, share my videos and my channel with your modeler friends. It really helps and makes me motivated. Now here is a before and the after. I hope you guys enjoy this video and see you next time.